Welcome to this Neural Network Programming Series. In this episode, we will dissect the difference between concatenating and stacking tensors. We'll look at three examples, one with PyTorch, one with TensorFlow, and one with NumPy. Hey, by the way, do you know that Deep Lizard has a vlog? If you want to connect with us in a totally different light, then come check out the vlog and say hi. Link in the description. All right, let's get to it. The difference between stacking and concatenating tensors can be described in a single sentence. So here goes. Concatenating joins a sequence of tensors along an existing axis, and stacking joins a sequence of tensors along a new axis. So let's look at some examples to get a handle on what exactly this means. We'll look at stacking and concatenating in three frameworks, PyTorch, TensorFlow, and NumPy. So let's get started. For the most part, concatenating along an existing axis of a sequence of tensors is pretty straightforward. The confusion usually arises when we want to concatenate along a new axis. For this, we stack. Another way of saying that we stack is to say that we create a new axis inside of all of our tensors, and then we can cat along this new axis. For this reason, let's be sure that we know how to create a new axis for any given tensor, and then we'll start stacking and concatenating. To demonstrate this idea, we'll start out by adding an axis to a PyTorch tensor. Here, we're importing PyTorch, and we're creating a simple tensor that has a single axis of length three. Now, to add an axis to a tensor in PyTorch, we use the unsqueeze function. We talked about this quite a lot in section one where we looked at squeezing and unsqueezing tensors. Here we are adding an axis, aka dimension, at index zero of this tensor. This gives us a tensor with a shape of one by three. So our original tensor had a shape of three, and now our tensor has a shape of one by three. So we went from a rank one tensor to a rank two tensor. Now we can also add an axis at the second index of this tensor. This also gives us a rank two tensor, but this time the shape is three by one. Adding an axis like this changes the way the data is organized inside the tensor, but it does not change the data itself. Basically, all three of these operations are just reshaping the tensor. We can see that by checking the shapes of each of these. Now, thinking back about concatenating versus stacking, we said that when we concatenate, we said that we are joining a sequence of tensors along an existing axis. This means that we are going to be extending the length of one of the existing axes. When we stack, we are creating a brand new axis that didn't exist before, and this happens across all the tensors in our sequence. And then we can concatenate along this new axis. Let's see how this is done in PyTorch. With PyTorch, the two functions we use for these two operations are called stack and cat. So let's create ourselves a sequence of tensors. Now let's concatenate these tensors with one another. Notice that each of these tensors have a single axis. This means that the result of the cat function will also have a single axis. This is because when we concatenate, we are doing it along an existing axis. Notice that in this example, the only existing axis is the single first axis. All right, so we took three single axis tensors, each having an axis length of three, and now we have a single axis tensor with an axis length of nine. Now let's stack these tensors, and to do this, we'll need a new axis. We'll insert an axis at the first index and then we'll stack these tensors along that axis. This, of course, will be happening behind the scenes of the stack function. And this gives us a new tensor that has a shape of three by three. Notice how the three tensors are concatenated along the first axis of this tensor. The first axis has a length of three because we concatenated three tensors along this axis. To see that this statement is true, Let's add a new axis of length one to all of our tensors by unsqueezing them, and then 
cat along the first axis. In this case, we can see that we get the same result that we got by stacking. However, the call to the stack function was much cleaner, and this is because the new axis insertion was handled by the stack function. Let's try this now along the second axis. Note though that it's not possible to concatenate this sequence of tensors along the second axis because there currently is no second axis, but we can stack them. In fact, stacking is our only option here. All right, we stacked with respect to the second axis, and this is a result. To understand this, think back to what it looked like when we inserted a new axis at the end of our tensor. Now we just do that to all of our tensors and then we can cat them like this. Here are three concrete examples that we can encounter in real life. Let's decide when we need to stack and when we need to concat. Suppose we have three individual images as tensors. Each image tensor has three dimensions, a channel axis, a height axis, a width axis. Note that each of these tensors are separate from one another. Now, assume that our task is to join these tensors together to form a single batch tensor of three images. Do we concat or do we stack? Well, notice that in this example, there are only three dimensions in existence, and for a batch, we need four dimensions. This means that the answer is to stack the tensors along a new axis. This new axis will be the batch axis. This will give us a single tensor with four dimensions by adding one for the batch. Note that if we join these three along any of the existing dimensions, we would be messing up either the channels, the height, or the width. We don't want to mess our data up like that. Let's see a second example. Now, suppose we have the same three images as before, but this time the images already have a dimension for the batch. This actually means we have three batches of size one. Assume that it is our task to obtain a single batch of three images. Do we concat or stack? Well, notice how there is an existing dimension that we can concat on. This means that we concat these along the batch dimension. In this case there is no need to stack. Let's see a third. This one is hard. Or at least more advanced. You will see why. Suppose we have the same three separate image tensors. Only, this time, we already have a batch tensor. Assume our task is to join these three separate images with the batch. Do we concat or do we stack? Well, notice how the batch axis already exists inside the batch tensor. However, for the images, there is no batch axis in existence. This means neither of these will work. To join with stack or cat, we need the tensors to have matching shapes. So then, are we stuck? Is this impossible? It is indeed possible. It's actually a very common task. The answer is to first stack and then to concat. We first stack the three image tensors with respect to the first dimension. This creates a new batch dimension of length 3. Then, we can concat this new tensor with the batch tensor. I hope this helps and you get it now. Check on dplizzard.com to see these examples implemented in code. All right, so let's take a look at this in TensorFlow and then we'll look at it in NumPy. What you're gonna find is that it's pretty similar, if not almost identical to what we just saw in PyTorch. So first thing we'll do is import TensorFlow as TF. All right, so now TensorFlow is imported and then we're ready to go ahead now and create three tensors so we can have a sequence of three tensors. So we do this with the tf.constant and you notice that we're just creating the same tensors as before. This syntax is very similar to what we saw with PyTorch. Now, instead of just torch.cat in TensorFlow, it's tf.concat. So in PyTorch, we have cat, and in TensorFlow, we have concat. And then the only other difference about making this call is that we say axis instead of dimension or dim. So we have axis zero, we wanna concat these three tensors along axis zero. And so we know what we're going to get. Each one of these tensors has a single axis. So our result from this concat call is gonna have a single axis and it's gonna be longer than each one of these single ones individually because we're going to have concatenated them. So let's run this code. 
we have a single dimensional rank one tensor where the data from each one of these was concatenated together along that single dimension. All right, so now the stack function is gonna be exactly the same as what we saw in PyTorch, except that again, we have an axis parameter instead of a dim parameter. They both mean the same thing though. So let's run this stack and we can see that indeed we got the same thing that we got in PyTorch. So both of these functions work exactly the same. Now let's see if we can manually insert an axis first and then concatenate to get the same result that we get here with the stack function. So just like we did in PyTorch, we're going to do the same thing in TensorFlow. Here, we're going to, we're going to call concat, we're gonna pass our sequence of tensors in, but we're going to expand the dimensions of each one of these tensors. And we do that with tf.expanddims. Now, this is the same thing as unsqueezing a tensor in PyTorch. So in PyTorch, we call it unsqueeze. In TensorFlow, we call it expand dims. We're expanding our dimensions with respect to axis zero, and then we're also concatenating with respect to this new axis, axis zero. All right, and indeed, we get the same thing that we get with tf.stack. Okay, next we're just going to stack with respect to the second axis or the axis at index one. Okay, and then we can do the same thing by expanding the dimensions of each one of these tensors first and then concatenating second with respect to the second dimension. Okay, and we get the same thing. So identical behavior between torch.stack and torch.cat and tf.stack and tf.concat. So now let's see how this is done in NumPy. So with NumPy, we have np.stack and we have np.concatenate. So in all three, PyTorch, TensorFlow, and NumPy, they all have a stack function, but each one of these libraries have called their concat function or their concatenate function a little bit different. In um, PyTorch, we have cat, and then in TensorFlow, we have concat, and then in NumPy, we get the whole shebang concatenate. So we'll go ahead and we'll import NumPy as MP. We're going to create three tensors, T1, T2, T3, and this is the same logic as what we did before. This is just doing it with NumPy. And then we can call NumPy.concatenate, passing our sequence of three tensors. And then we do this with respect to the first axis. So NumPy uses the parameter name axis, just like TensorFlow. Okay, and then the behavior is exactly the same as the other two. Now we will stack np.stack with respect to the first axis. And again, the behavior is the same as the last two. Now, if we want to achieve the stack functionality with the concatenate function, we need to manually expand the dimensions of each one of our tensors first and then we can concatenate with respect to this new dimension. So just like TensorFlow, NumPy uses, NumPy has named their function expand dims. So if we want to add an axis or expand the dimensions of a tensor, we use expand dims. Okay, so we'll run this code and we'll see that just like the other two libraries, we're getting the same behavior. And this is cool. We can also see this in the NumPy source code. We do this in Jupyter Notebook by putting two question marks before the function name and running the cell. Here, we can see that the stack function receives some arrays. Then, it checks that all the arrays have the same shape. This is a requirement. Next, the expanded version of the arrays is generated. Then, these expanded arrays are passed to the concatenate function. So there. Now you know, and it is cool. All right, finally, we'll just stack with respect to the second axis, okay, and then expand the dimensions at the second axis, and then concatenate, and we have the same result once again. So this is how stacking and concatenating, we can think of the stack function as 
kind of additional functionality added on to the concat function. And so we've seen this demonstrated in all three libraries. So whether we're using PyTorch, whether we're using TensorFlow, or whether we're using NumPy, the concept is going to be the same. And this is often what we find when we're working with different libraries is it's all conceptually the same thing. We just might have a little bit different syntax, different naming schemes, or different notations, but that shouldn't kind of get in your way of actually understanding the concept and being able to seamlessly work within any framework or library. If you haven't already, be sure to check out deeplizzard.com where there's blog posts for each episode. There's even quizzes that you can use to test your understanding of the content. And don't forget about the Deep Lizard Hive Mind, where you can get exclusive perks and rewards. Thanks for contributing to Collective Intelligence. I'll see you in the next one. L. O. L. It is pretty funny and ironic how concatenation showed up in this video. I mean, we were talking about concatenation and methods that implement it, and as we moved from PyTorch to TensorFlow and then to NumPy, the method name for concatenation was literally morphing in a way that can only be explained through the term itself. PyTorch uses cat. TensorFlow uses concat. NumPy uses concat and nate. That's deep. It's so meta.